Hello and uh, welcome back. So in this uh, course on powder metallurgy, uh, so far uh, we have seen different techniques for uh, fabrication of uh, metal powders and we have discussed uh, almost every details of these uh, techniques one by one in past uh, several classes. And we have also seen uh, in, in for, for some of those methods like the atomization process, how the microstructure of the powder can be controlled. Now uh, one thing uh, that you would have realized by now is that uh, a particular type of fabrication route uh, will give rise to a particular uh, type of particles especially in terms of uh, their shape and size okay for example uh, if you see in this uh, particular image over here the particle shape is irregular okay and if you remember uh, these particles uh, are generated by the mechanical fabrication process okay and on the other hand uh, if you see on this image the particles are spherical and uh, this is something that we got in the atomization process. Right? Like that every process can generate uh, different types of particle uh, shape size size distribution and so on and uh, therefore uh, it is important for us to know as to how uh, you can characterize the powder and get to know about this uh, shape size and other powder properties because such properties are going to affect the entire powder metallurgy process as such because what happens uh, as you would have seen before also in a powder metallurgy process uh, you start with the powder and then you follow certain processing steps and, and in each of those steps you know a, a particular process is involved which uh, uses uh, some kind of toolings and so on to uh, first uh, compact the powder to, to give it a particular shape and then uh, finally consolidate and densify it to get the uh, end product. Okay. So this uh, compaction and the consolidation part uh, that is going to be affected by these powder characteristics what we talked about uh, such as this powder shape, uh, powder size and so on. Right. So therefore, uh, it is uh, necessary for us to understand uh, these parameters and also we need to know how this can be uh, analyzed and evaluated, right. So having said that, I want you to now go back to this particular slide over here that we discussed uh, in the beginning of this course, if you remember. And here we talked about uh, the importance of this uh, central part of this powder metallurgy tetrahedron that you see over here. And at the center of this uh, you have this characterization, right. And as I said, uh, unless you characterize the powder, uh, you will not know what kind of uh, powder uh, properties uh, you have obtained in a particular uh, powder which has been 
processed by a particular fabrication route, right? So that is what uh, we are going to talk about in today's class and in next few classes as to how you characterize the powder in order to know the different powder properties, okay? So that's going to be the topic for today's class, powder characterization. Now when you talk about uh, powder characterization as such, you are uh, basically talking about the powder particles and their different characteristics, okay? So first uh, let us define uh, what a particle is and then we will see uh, what those particle uh, properties or the attributes uh, that we are looking for in order to uh, know the characteristics of the powder. Okay. So a particle uh, can be defined as the smallest unit that cannot be divided further. Okay. So that is the basic uh, definition of a particle. And as far as the powder metallurgy uh, process is concerned, it generally deals with uh, particles which are bigger than smoke. That means bigger than this size range uh, 0 0.01 to 1 micron, but uh, smaller than sand, which is having a size range of uh, 0 0.1 to 3 millimeter, right? So that is the kind of uh, size that we are talking about in the powder metallurgy process. Okay. And uh, the, the characterization process uh, for the powder will involve the measurement of uh, particles as well as uh, some of the bulk powder properties as well. Okay. Particle characteristics uh, such, such as uh, particle size and size distribution, particle shape and its uh, variation with size, surface area of the particles. So these are the attributes uh, uh, for the particles as such. And then uh, some powder properties uh, like the flow and packing characteristics of the powder as a whole has to be evaluated when you talk about uh, characterizing the powder. Then you have uh, properties like interparticle friction uh, which is going to affect uh, the process particularly the compaction process uh, that is uh, done for compacting the powder uh, and, and get a shape out of it. And of course, uh, you also uh, need to know uh, the internal structure of the particles, uh, which is also known as uh, the, the microstructure. And if you remember, this is something that we have already discussed in uh, past several classes. And composition, homogeneity and if there is any contamination uh, that also has to be evaluated because each of these uh, characteristics will have their own influence on the powder metallurgy process. Okay? So we are going to talk about each of these as to how do you evaluate these uh, different parameters, how do you measure them and so on. Okay? Now, uh, when you are talking about uh, characterizing the powder, uh, you, you first need to uh, collect the sample uh, in order to, you know, uh, use a particular instrument to, to, measure, a, to, to measure a particular uh, property, okay, or to evaluate the powder. You need to first uh, collect a proper sample uh, from a powder lot, right? Because uh, as you have seen, uh, these powders are uh, produced in large quantities. And uh, when you uh, characterize the powder, you, you know, you, you can't take the entire sample uh, 
or the entire lot and then you know you characterize the the entire lot or all the particles in a in a, in a lot that is uh, fabricated by a particular process okay so therefore you need to first uh, collect a small sample uh, from a large amount of powder and you should collect the sample uh, in such a manner that it is actually a true representative of the entire lot of the powder uh, which is there okay and that is very critical uh, for the measurement of particle characteristics obtaining a representative sample you know which will uh, represent the entire lot as i said and when you try and collect the sample uh, these are the things uh, that you need to remember first of all uh, this powder is generated somewhere and then it could have been uh, shipped or transported to some other place where it is actually characterized right so it is possible that uh, you know during this uh, transportation and uh, shipment uh, the the powders will tend to separate and uh, while they are being stored uh, they may also agglomerate right so this is something uh, that you need to consider when you try and obtain this uh, representative sample in order to uh, minimize this sampling errors right so in a powder sample it should be a random mix uh, which is uh, free of any agglomeration or any other type of separation depending on size or shape and so on right so these are the good practices that one should follow in order to uh, collect a good uh, representative sample okay first of all uh, the samples uh, must not be taken from the top or bottom of the powder container then the samples uh, should be taken from several locations and mixed together uh, this will ensure that uh, it is a random mix and is a good representative of the entire lot of the powder as i said uh, there are chances of uh, agglomeration during uh, shipment and storage so it is always good to deagglomerate the particles by following uh, processes such as drying the powder to remove the adds of moisture because one of the uh, major causes uh, for the uh, particle agglomeration is the moisture which is being adds up because this moisture is uh, is going to act like a glue between the particles and make them stick together and as a result you know they will tend to agglomerate right so when this uh, moisture is removed by drying the particles will also tend to separate from each other and then the powder sample can be deagglomerated and in order to avoid this uh, agglomeration or sticking of this powder particles with each other organics uh, with charged anionic or cationic uh, terminal groups can can be used as dispersant right so uh, dispersant uh, is a is a organic material you know the which will which will modify the surface of the particles and uh, prevent uh, uh, their you know uh, their sticking together or their agglomeration okay then uh, mechanical stirring and ultrasonic agitation can also be utilized in order to uh, you know randomly mix the powder and uh, remove any uh, agglomeration or separation that uh, might have happened during uh, transportation and and storage and uh, 
if this can be done, uh, you know, uh, the samples, if, if it can be taken from a moving stream of particles rather than, you know, from a stationary uh, heap of a powder, that is uh, going to uh, provide a powder sample which will be a very good uh, representative of the entire lot of the powder because here you have a streaming feature where different types of particles uh, are mixed. Okay. So, if you collect a sample uh, from a particular location of that stream, uh, it, it is going to give you a good sample uh, which will you know uh, contain uh, all kinds of powder that may be uh, present uh, in the in, in a particular lot. Okay. And certain uh, devices like this uh, rotary rifflers uh, can be used and uh, these uh, rifflers uh, divides the flowing powder into rotating containers and therefore is a good and reliable practice for sampling. So, as the powder stream comes down, uh, you know, it can be sent through this kind of uh, rotary rifflers which will send the powder uh, in different containers uh, which are, uh, you know, rotating around it and as a result, uh, it will keep collecting powder sample as the uh, powder comes down onto this device. Okay. So, uh, these are, uh, you know, some of the uh, measures that can be taken to ensure that you have a good representative sample which can be tested for evaluating the powder properties. Okay, now that uh, uh, we have talked about these uh, particles and uh, the sampling process, let us go ahead and see what are the kinds of other types of particles that we are talking about here. These are uh, the different uh, kinds of uh, particles that one might encounter uh, in, a, in a powder. Primary particles uh, which are nothing but the uh, smallest uh, closed pore particles wherein the particle density is very close to the true density of the material. Then you have something called agglomerates and these are nothing but uh, the clusters of uh, primary particles bounded either by the surface forces or liquid bridges such as water. So, as I said before in the beginning, uh, there are chances that moisture can be absorbed by the particles and in that case, uh, you know, this moisture or water will act as a liquid bridge between the particles and uh, they will stick to each other uh, forming the clusters, right. <coughs> but these are all, uh, you know, loosely bonded particles and therefore, uh, these agglomerates can be easily broken by shear stresses uh, which are far below the material strength. Right. So, if you apply a small amount of force, a small amount of stress, uh, these agglomerates can be easily broken down. And uh, the driving force uh, for the particles to stick to each other or to form this agglomerate is the specific surface energy E, which is uh, given by this. wherein A is the surface area and B is the volume and gamma is the surface energy, right. So, if you take a spherical particle of diameter D, then uh, this uh, specific surface energy is going to be 6 gamma by D because uh, for a spherical particle A is uh, 
given by this where r is the radius and uh, b is equal to and therefore a by b is equal to Three by R or six by T, right? So that's how you you get E equals to six gamma y D for a spherical particle. Then there are uh, two more types that uh, you can get uh, in a powder. One is uh, known as flux. Uh, which are basically uh, agglomerates uh, that form in liquid suspensions and here the particles are held together by the electrostatic forces right and the other type is aggregate uh, which is nothing but a mixture of two or more particulate material okay so these are the different uh, types of uh, particles uh, that uh, you can expect to encounter while you are uh, characterizing the powder. So, when you are uh, talking about uh, evaluating the particle characteristics uh, size and shape are the two main characteristics uh, that we are looking for here because that is going to have uh, a great bearing on the complex and process which uh, we are uh, going to see later on So, what we have seen uh, is that uh, uh, most of the fabrication processes uh, generate complex shapes and uh, the particle size and shape uh, will affect the flow packing and compressibility of the powder. Okay. So, this is something as I said is very important as far as uh, the complex and process is, is concerned wherein the powder has to be filled in a dye, it has to be packed and then it has to be compressed. right? So, that is why flow packing and the compressibility of the powder are very important characteristics. And as far as uh, the, the size is concerned, uh, since there are different kinds of shapes uh, that uh, you can generate in, in powders, you need to choose a characteristics dimension to define the uh, size or, or shape of the particle. Right? For example, if it is a spherical particle, it is uh, far easier to uh, define that particular dimension because in this case it will be just the diameter of the sphere. But as the uh, shape becomes more and uh, more complex, uh, you need uh, more than one such parameter uh, to, to define the uh, shape and size of the particle. For example, if it is a flake uh, like what you have over here, then you need at least two parameters here. Uh, one is the diameter okay, d and other is the uh, thickness of the flake. Okay. So, these are the two things uh, that you need to uh, define uh, the size of the particle. Okay. On the other hand, as it becomes a uh, little more complex, 
like these uh, rounded irregular particles then you can see it also becomes uh, more difficult to define a particular dimension or a particular uh, geometric parameter to define the uh, size of the particles. So, for example, uh, in this case of, uh, of a rounded irregular particle, uh, you have several of these uh, parameters like uh, the uh, maximum length or the width of the particle or the uh, projected height of the particle or uh, the diameter at the center. Okay. So, these are more than one uh, parameters that uh, one has to define in order to uh, define the uh, size of this kind of particles. And when it becomes completely irregular like this, then it becomes uh, really very difficult to come up with a particular characteristics dimension that will give the size of the particles, right. So, therefore, you know we, we need to have uh, certain measures or, or certain techniques in place uh, which will help us in uh, characterizing the particles uh, in terms of their size and shape, right. And the first thing uh, that is done uh, towards that is to uh, you know uh, give some kind of uh, qualitative description to the shape of the particles especially for the ones which are not very regular, right? Like we can see in this, uh, in this uh, particular uh, image over here, spherical particles are well defined as uh, we discussed just now, but as it becomes uh, more and more uh, irregular, then it has to be defined by, by, you know, some description, which is more of a qualitative kind of description to just to come up with certain terms, right, which which will define the uh, particle shape, right. So, these are those uh, different uh, terminologies which are used to define the particle shapes. And as, as I said, this is more of a qualitative description of the particles. So, what we discussed today is, if I want to summarize now, is that uh, it is uh, very important to characterize the powder in order to know the characteristics of the powder. And uh, there are different uh, properties which can be evaluated and uh, some of these uh, pertains to the particle as such and some of them correspond to the bulk powder and these are those characteristics that uh, we are looking for as far as uh, the powder and the powder particles are concerned. Starting from uh, you know particle size and going all the way to the internal structure and the chemical composition of the powder particles. And when you try and evaluate uh, the powder particles, it is uh, very important and in fact, uh, it is very critical that uh, we have a sample which is a true representative of the entire lot of the powder. And in order to make sure that uh, we have a good representative sample, uh, there are uh, certain do's and don'ts that one needs to follow. So, uh, these are the recommended things that one can follow in order to ensure that a good representative sample is collected. Like, you know, uh, taking the sample from different parts rather than from only top or from only bottom. And then, you know, uh, deagglomerating the powder by different uh, uh, 
methods, different processes like drying or you know using uh, mechanical stirrer or ultrasonic agitation and so on. And also at times it is good to uh, collect powder samples from a moving stream which will give you uh, a true mix of uh, different types of powder particles that can be present in, in a powder lot and therefore it will be a, a good uh, representative sample when it is collected uh, from a stream of particles. And then we talked about this uh, you know different types of particles like the primary particles, agglomerates, flocks and aggregates. And then uh, finally uh, we defined uh, the particle shape and the size. The size can be defined in terms of a characteristics dimension which uh, depends on the type of particles that uh, we have and uh, the shape can be qualitatively defined by, by a term like this for different types of uh, particle morphology as we can see in this particular image. Okay. So, with that uh, we come to the end of this class. Thank you for your attention.